The Atlanta Falcons improved to 3-3 three and three on the season with a 28-14 victory over San Francisco at home last weekend. Welcome to the Falcons Audible presented by AT&T. I'm Derek Rackley. Back all three of us in the studio. Although, as an, an Atlanta fan and resident, I think we're a little bit bummed that you're in the studio, DJ, because that means the Braves are out of the playoffs. For sure. Because they should still be playing and you should be off chasing them around the no country. Doubt. No doubt. Um, but... You know what they say. It is what it is. It is what it is, man. I just knew we were going to be out traveling. I can see you guys via Zoom again. I know how much you guys love right? enjoy that. Look at right? his face. He hates it. Look at it. But, uh, yeah, man, it's tough for the Braves, man. Uh, not a good year. Uh, well, it was a good well, year, a but good didn't, year. Finish off, didn't finish it well. Didn't play well in the postseason. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, anyway, but we got DJ Shockley. We got Dave Archer again. I'm Derek Rackley. We're going to talk about Falcons stuff here. How about we do that? Because at the end of the day, this is a Falcons podcast, Let's not go. a Braves podcast. What are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about Marcus Mariota showing out. We're going to talk about the Falcons playing three phase football offense defense and special teams and then we'll look ahead a little bit on what it's going to take to beat the Cincinnati Bengals who also come in at three and three this season so without further ado guys let's get a headline reaction how would you Dave describe the matchup against San Francisco the win against the 49ers at home in a headline style so you give me one line? Is it one word? I mean, one it word? just depends on like what kind of like writer you are. Because if you're a good yeah, writer, I'm... it's one word, it's one line, <laughs> yeah, it's no, succinct, no, 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 it's no, to no. the point, and it's like bam, get their attention. <laughs> no, no, no. If you if if you saw me play with the, the with the with the uh, relationship I had with the writers, yeah, no, 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 no. okay. So no writing for me. But what okay. I would say is is uh, my word would be impressive. Okay, I would go with impressive. And I, the reason I would say impressive, real quickly, not to steal any any headlines from shock. Yeah, yeah. Good um, chance of that. Fourteen nothing. You jump out. Yeah. They close the gap to fourteen fourteen. How many times have we seen everybody go? Oh, and start running for the aisles. Yeah, no doubt. They've reeled us in, and then boom, you go back down and get another touchdown before half. Yeah. And go ahead and take control of the second half. Impressive. Like it. Impressive. DJ, what you got? Can I say one thing before I give my headline? I know you guys may have What if I this. said no? Yeah, I'm probably going to say it anyway. <laughs> but uh, uh, I wasn't here last week. I'm sure you guys covered it. But I wanted to make sure okay. that I give my guy Arch his flowers from last week. Call oh, it, yeah. Call calling, game a, all calling a solo. freaking game. Solo. Dolo. solo. Oh, man. That was awesome, man. Appreciate I mean, you, man. To, I mean, I could have used you. I thought about that <laughs> spot. I was like, man, that would be, that'd be different. But. Arch crushed it, so I just want to make sure wow, that's I gave my dude his flowers. Right Nicely there. done. Hopefully Nicely we didn't done. turn too many yeah. listeners away. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> my mind would be Falcons continue to prove physicality in win. Okay. NFC fun. All right. So I thought. A long headline. It, it's, I got a long paper. I okay. like to, you know. Yeah, he got that like. Like eleven by seventeen style no newspaper, no, no, the no, old no. paper, the old. Yeah. Thing. Everybody, everybody got their own style, so that's what it is. So. All right, guys, <laughs> good. And I'll and I'll give you mine real quick. And I'm gonna say Falcons have an identity and they stick to it. And that don't that don't fit either, right? <laughs> that don't fit either. How, that Falcons was too long. To, have too identity. Long? There's just one comma and stick to it. Like I thought it was actually pretty good. Now it's why good. You, why you it's come good. back? First my of bad, all, you give bad. him a compliment, then my you bad. rain on my parade. Cause you was with Arch on my like my title. You're shooting cannons you, at us, you, Arch. You, I just you, you was on Arch's side. That's why both y'all stuff is getting shortened down by the editor. That's what you know. The yeah, editor ain't letting them headlines pass. Dave was like, you got to learn from me. It's just called impressive. All yeah. right, so Dave, talk about it. Let's talk about impressive. Let's talk yeah. about Marcus Mariota because it's inside of 11 minutes left in the fourth quarter when he throws his first and only incompletion mm. of the game, right? And what I think, and I'm talking about my headline, is have an identity and stick to it. What has Arthur Smith and his team decided that they're going to do? They're going to run the football, and they're going to throw the ball enough to keep it honest, but not put Marcus Mariota in this offense in a situation where he tries to, tries to do too much and makes the, the critical mistake. So what was so impressive that you saw in this matchup last weekend? Well, I've been talking about this guy for several weeks now. Anybody that's been watch, watching the podcast here, and we appreciate you, by the way, um, I've been talking about how this guy is a, is, is a good player and that he's doing a lot of stuff. Uh, a lot of stuff at the line of scrimmage mm -hmm. to change things at the line of scrimmage. His reads on zone read. He ran for a touchdown on a zone read. His RPO reads to pull and throw. Uh, and then when he does get an opportunity to get a full pattern route, and he's not getting a lot of these now, guys. A lot of people are kind of compare him to Patrick Mahomes and all these guys that are just dropping and throwing it all over the yard. 
He's probably getting somewhere. He had 14 throws in this game. He pulled it down probably two or three other times. Mm -hmm. So let's say he got 20 opportunities to throw the football, pulled it down five or, or six. Um, he's probably getting somewhere in that eight or nine, maybe seven full pattern routes. Yeah. And by that, I mean he's dropping and he's got five guys in the pattern. Most of these are two-man routes. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they're one-man routes, Jock, you know. Mm -hmm. So to that end – to go 13 of 14, and I would argue the one miss is he threw it away. Yeah. It was third and short, third and about five, tight coverage, threw it away, Quarters tried to preserve there, yeah. tried to preserve the, the field position there. Um, so I think he's playing at the highest level. Play of the game for me. Do I, do, can I say that now, or do we got something Absolutely later? Absolutely, okay. I, I I didn't read the script, the so half. my bad. Before the half. Before the half. No question about it. The 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 run by where he pulls it down. Only DJ Shockley and maybe one other guy could have made that run. Hmm. But to knife through and get sixteen on a tw third and twelve yeah. when he was dead in the water. Yeah. I mean, you had pressure all around him. He had a guy free in the pocket. He made a guy miss in the pocket. Made a guy miss at the second level and split two safeties to get the first down. That was a ballsy play. No question about it. Heck of a run. Um, he had what fifty yards rushing to yeah. sprinkling with his passing. Yeah. That's pretty good. He mentioned uh, that DJ and maybe one other guy. Yeah. We had another guy here on the show a few weeks back, Michael Vick, that I'm pretty sure could That's make the other a run. Guy. Yeah, that was the I other guy. I couldn't think of the other guy's that name. Was that the, was the other okay, guy. that was the other guy. I've seen him convert a couple <laughs> yeah. of third and twelves no. on his own yeah. before as yeah, well. No doubt. DJ, what stuck out to you is, is some of the key plays or maybe momentum shifters or impressive, as Arch talked about, from the game on Sunday? It's, it's interesting Arch bring that up because that's one of the plays because – Today, you know, before we do our podcast, I always do a, a breakdown that people can watch on LandonFalcons.com or YouTube. And that play on third down was one of the plays that, you know, I pointed out is they want a stunt. They had a stunt from the defensive end, comes loops all the way around, and they do a good job of, you know, kind of kind of sorting it out. But there's pressure in there, and he has to make a move like Arch said and move over and, you know, picks up the big run. There's so many things that I think people don't really understand that he does in a ball game that helps his team win. Arch talks about changing plays. Uh, I go back to the Tampa game where, you know, he goes can-can, changes the play, gives it off to Avery Williams. He go runs for a touchdown. I think the other part that people uh, fail to realize and it would never come up in a stat sheet is toughness. Yep. And his ability to stand in there and make throws. There was a throw in, in the Tampa game where he throws an out route to Drake London. He's got Devin White coming, screaming right down at him on a free run. He stands in there and delivers it. Drake London catches for a first down. There's a play in this ball game. Uh, I'm not sure what down it was, but he hits OZ across the middle, and it comes from a stunt. He has a guy beaming right down on him again, but he stands in there and delivers a strike to OZ across the middle for about a 15-yard gain. Those are some of the plays that you never see on the stat sheet that never really comes up when, you know, you're looking at ESPN or you're looking at highlights, but that's something that his teammates can see on tape every single week and say, we know a guy that's tough enough to stand in there and make the throws. And then there's another part that I think is interesting that goes kind of uh, people don't even really think about is think about how much stuff they do pre-snap and then how much stuff they do post-snap with motion shifts. Mm -hmm. And he has to be the guy to get everybody lined up, make sure everybody's set, make sure everything happens. And then when the ball snap – from all the pre-snap movement, he has to make sure and see what's going on on the outside because the defense has to change as well. And the, 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 the ability to make quick decisions off that, I think, is really, really important. Arch talked about some of the RPO stuff he does, seeing it, and then just being a better athlete. I mean, San Fran on that touchdown, they had it played. They had the, the dive covered. They had the DB sitting outside way no Mariota, and he just outruns the guy. Mm -hmm. That's kind of stuff that, you know, it, it, it's hard to teach. You just got to have it. And he's playing some of the best football. And I, I think, you know, Arthur Smith said it a few weeks back, this dude's coming off not playing for two years. Yeah. And he was five games in coming to this one. Dude's still trying to get his mojo going. He's sure. still trying to figure out, all right, yep. what well, what's going to make me successful? And I think he's doing that and he's kind of finding his rhythm. We all got a chance to watch the game, but sometimes it's like you look back at it and you see, okay, the starting quarterback threw for 129 passing yards and two touchdowns, and they win this game by two touchdowns. So it's like, how do they do it, right? Mm -hmm. So some of the things you guys talked about individual plays, sometimes I like to take a step back and just think about like the most important parts, okay? Why did they win? They ran for 168 yards and they held San Francisco to 50, okay? Couple that with winning the turnover margin three to zero. Mm -hmm. Like, you can sit here and talk all about this new age of NFL football, throwing it all across the yard. 
if that's how you run the football and that's how you are in a turnover margin, yes, you you're going to yeah. win a lot of football games, right? And I would bet you that if Arthur Smith can kind of draw it up, he would say, yeah, this is what I want. Yeah. I want us to be able to win the running game and to protect the football, take it away on defense, right? Not only that, guys, let's, let's flip it over to the other side of the ball. Because what I was impressed about was we go into the fourth quarter arch, right? Get a couple guys banged up, okay? In the secondary, right? And they know, and they're going to start taking some shots downfield. So then what happens in the fourth quarter? You get Darren Hall with a next-level pass deflection on Ayuk when they try to take a shot down the field, right? And then the very next play, what do we get? Deflection, interception, right? So there's always this talk about next man up mentality, but you just never know what's going to happen. Mm. Terrell goes down. Oliver gets banged up for a little bit, right? Hayward. Hayward. Yeah. So these guys are not only getting a chance to perform, Dave, but they're coming in and they're making big plays that are becoming – that are that are really pivotal in out, outcome of the game. Absolutely, uh, I'm glad you brought it up, Rack. I mean, you had to wear. If you were a fan, you had to look at your program. Okay, who's at corner? <laughs> D. Alford. Yeah. Well, D. Alford had been playing nickel since the middle part of training camp. He hadn't played any corner. Yeah. yeah. All of a sudden, he's out at corner because Casey's out. You mentioned D. Hall. Darren Hall comes in uh, for uh, A.J. Terrell. Now Mike Ford. It slides into the nickel because you see Isaiah Oliver leave the game. And you're going, wait a minute. Okay, i got to check. Who's 28? You know, you're trying to figure <laughs> out. The thing that was impressive about it was not so much that different guys were on the field. You mentioned the play on Aouk's deep post route. Hall goes up with the right hand, bats it away in a perfectly played one-on-one -on -one setup. But go back to the play where he creates the interception. Yep. They're running post deep over, okay? And he's playing outside technique on the post route, looking back to the inside. Okay, how many reps has he gotten exactly. in that's a week tough. to get ready for that? Okay, probably not many because that's been A.J. out there playing that spot. They sprinkle in a few reps for some of these other guys, but not nearly as many as the first team gets. And here comes Debo Samuel on an over route. Mm. He passes off the post route to his safety. And he sits on the over route and collisions Debo Samuel. The ball's popping in the air, and Jalen picks it off. Mm -hmm. That, to me, is is well-coached and then from a player well-absorbed, understanding your responsibilities. Because he could have come in at either corner. He could have been on the other corner. He's the next corner in. D. Alford's not the next corner. So yep. if Casey'd been in, he'd been on the other side of it. So he wouldn't even have seen that. That would have been going away from him. Yep. For him to be in the game for A.J., and to play it that way, phenomenal by just the, the coaching and then having and the guys being able to absorb it. I mean, guys, it's like, DJ, how many times do we see when you end up having to go that deep in the depth chart, especially at the corner position, it's like quarterback starts licking their lips, oh, yeah. right? Like, oh, we're yeah. going to go take a shot. And it ends up happening, and the, the offense makes a play. But he steps in there, and then not only that, makes two excellent plays that could have really turned the momentum around in the game. Right. So you've got that. And then the other thing I wanted to mention, and it di didn't really result anything in the scorebook, but was their four minute offense at the end of the game, forcing San Francisco to burn timeouts. They actually don't get a first down. They have to punt it away. But it was like they did their job. They yeah. made San Francisco eat their timeouts, took some time off the clock and made it difficult when they did get an opportunity to come back. What else stuck out to you defensively? Because this is not all just an offensive game. Yeah, I mean, it's unbelievable. You look at the fact that those guys did not blink. They got in the ball game, and in those moments, you're talking about corners who, you know, you're standing over for a long time, and you haven't really had the opportunity to, to get your adrenaline going like that. Maybe you've been on special teams, you've been doing some other kind of stuff, but to be in a position where you got Ayuk who's had a really good ball game, and you have him on that deep post, how many guys in that spot have we seen panic and get a P.I.? Yep. Or how many guys we see in the in the moment Arch talks about with uh, you know with, with passing things off that you're actually so locked in that you can see that and then be able to break on the ball and make a play and not have a PI or be in a position that you're supposed to. I mean, those are things that gives you a lot of things to be excited about when it comes to this defense because regardless of who's in there, guys are doing their job. Mm -hmm. And the other big thing I, I saw on both sides of the ball, nine of fourteen on third down for the offense, three of eight on defense for San Francisco. Mm -hmm. That means, for one, you're staying on the field. Yeah. You're doing a good job of getting them off the field. And early in the ball game, the Falcons were in a lot of third and two or three. And late in the ball game, though, they had some seven and eight nines that they had to convert and did a good job. But the third and 13 I was talking about, that's one. And then on the other side, you know what Debo Sammy is about. You know Jimmy Garoppolo doesn't really throw the football to a lot of people. 
and for you to force those turnovers, there were a lot of different looks that Dean Pease put into this ball game that I thought Jimmy Garoppolo was holding it, he was looking, he was searching, and it was hard for him to find open guys. Mm-hmm. So give this defense a lot of credit for playing the way they did. Uh, this is a team that's tied for fourth in the league right now in takeaways, one off the lead. I mean, that tells you about that? a lot about – what this team is doing right now and being able to get after opposing offense. Well, let's talk about a couple of the young guys on that side of the ball, too. Yeah. Troy Anderson gets the start at linebacker. He had 13 tackles mm-hmm. in the game. In fact, he had a huge tackle on special teams where he ran the returner down no to prevent, the, prevent a score there. No and then how about Arnold Ebikati? He continues mm. to come. He got a sack taken off of the board because of a holding penalty on Lorenzo Carter, who was beating – the daylights out of Kittle trying to get off the ball, which was which is another story in itself. Just the physicality they put some of those guys that are kind of finesse players through, uh, Kittle being one of them. Um, they beat him up pretty good. But uh, give Ebikati some credit, too, for getting around the quarterback. I felt like Garoppolo, I talked to uh, Arthur Smith on Monday in our coaches' show, and I, I said, was it just me or did I, – I would kind of had a feeling as a quarterback, you kind of sense it through the guy that's playing – he felt uncomfortable the whole game. Mm-hmm. He just sensed that he just wasn't settled, and I think it's because of that rush. Yeah. And it's not getting home yet. And I know the fans. Yeah, I know you want sacks. Um, I think it's coming. But this is a group that makes a guy feel uncomfortable. I thought Brady was uncomfortable a few times mm-hmm. a week ago. So uh, just to throw a couple of guys in there, Ebikati and and, uh, and Troy Anderson, a couple of second round picks that are getting it done. Yeah, and you mentioned Anderson on special teams making the tackle. DJ, I think it's another area. Like generally, when we've been talking about special teams, it's Young Way Koo, right? Yeah. Like he ends up making the kicks that the Falcons need to either get in a game, win a game, or something like that. But it's not. Is Avery Williams. Like, yeah. Avery Williams stepping up Ooh. and making some big returns. This close. It looks yeah. like it's going to pop. Exactly, right? Like, his value to this team, right? Guy that used to be a defensive back. Now he's getting snaps at running back, but he's still a legit returner, and he's doing his job in that role. Not turning it over, number one. Number two, getting some returns that are helping give them favorable field position. And that's the number one thing is giving your offense maybe one or two extra first downs. He's averaging 17.8 yards on punt returns. He's averaging 24 yards on kickoff returns. And you're talking about just changing the the field position. Sometimes we always talk about that with punters. You know, like you pin them back to the one, which Pinion did with an outstanding job. He's kicking them high. He's doing a great job of that. But also on the other side of it, giving your offense a couple more first downs. Starting them out instead of, hey, you're fair catching on the 10-yard line. He's making a couple guys miss. And before you know it, you're up here on the 28, 30-yard line. That's great starting field position for your offense. It gives your offense a coordinator the ability to say, okay, we're not backed up. I can call my regular offense so we can get this thing going. So that is a hidden, hidden gem for the Falcons, having a guy who's aggressive, for one, because we've seen the last few years where we've had some guys who just want to fair catch it, which is okay. But now <laughs> we got a guy who is not afraid to catch it and make some guys miss and get a feel and start their offense in prime territory shock talking hidden yardage right very head coaching right. <laughs> i don't know man there may be a future for you look out uh, hey real quickly let's yep. just stay on special teams sure. i know you love this rack you might have the two best gunners in football i mean mike ford every time the returner looks up mike ford's standing right there yep, he's no unbelievable yep. and how about Kadero hodges you mentioned pinning at the one yard line played yep. it perfectly he's another guy that's outstanding on the edge yep. you've got two guys with pinion banging it the way he is on from the front that's a weapon, and the hidden yardage shocks talking about those two gunners getting down there. It's fun to watch. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna find a lot of those balls dropping inside the five yard line. It was nice to see him just kind of look back, <laughs> make sure I'm not in the end zone. Here you go, guys. You can start with this on the one yard line. So yeah, we talked about the uh, the three phase performance, and again, some of the thing the the players that we talked about, some of the stats that we talked about. You're gonna win games in the NFL when that's how things end up shaking out. This episode in part brought to you by The Home Depot. Everything you need for your next home improvement project is just a tap away on the Home Depot app. The Home Depot app digital toolbox gives you access to how-to guides, project calculators, and image search so you'll know exactly what you need to pick up. With the tap of the finger, you can rent and reserve the right tools for the job. Also, browse through millions of items from top brands that you can have delivered right to your door. Whatever your project, Find exactly what you need with the Home Depot app. Download the Home Depot app today. So let's let's look ahead now. 
And it's interesting, guys, because I had to remind myself when the Falcons' bye week was, right? Because now's the time when NFL teams start having their bye week, right? So it's like, okay, what do they need to do before the bye week? Not Atlanta. No. No. Bye week ain't coming for a long (laughs) time. time (laughs) It's going to be December until we start talking about that. So what do you do? You continue to build off of last week's performance. So they're going to face the the, uh, Cincinnati Bengals this week. They're coming off a win against the Saints when Joe Burrow went 28 of 37 for 300 yards. So, Arch, let's just just talk to me a little bit. Talk to us. Talk to them about the Bengals, what Atlanta is going to see, and what some of the areas that are going to be the key areas that they got to win in order to get another victory. This well, weekend. this is a multiple offense. Burrow throws it all over the yard. He's got three guys, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, and, Ch- and Jamar Chase are phenomenal outside receivers. Chase had the 60-yard touchdown late in the football game that won the game in New Orleans for him. By the way, Joe Burrow shows up with the national championship Jamar Chase ah, jersey. I don't sorry. know if that was a sorry. that was a nice that was a nice touch on his part. <laughs> the last time they were in that building, they won a it's national crazy. title. So yeah. that was pretty cool. Um, so when you start thinking about uh, their their attack, Joe Mixon, good running back. Uh, P. Ryan's a good running back that comes off the bench. This is a talented offensive skill position group. Therein lies some of the issues that Cincinnati has has problems with. Is the offensive line's been a little bit leaky? Mm-hmm. And I think that they've been leaky some this year. They were they were a sieve a year ago, even though that team made it to the playoffs. I think he had what he was sacked like ten times in the playoff game yes. in one playoff game. Still won the football game. That tells you how talented they are. Um, but this is going to be an all day fight for the back seven of mm-hmm. this. Of the, you're going to have to fight to try to find some pressures, which Dean Pease will with a multitude of different guys coming. But there in that that lies the problem yep. is if I come, I've got guys man to man, and you could probably point to all three of these receivers as no worse than a two receiver on most every other team, yep. yeah. and they may all be ones. Yep. Yeah. Yep. They can all play. Sure. And my worry, and I'm just going to go ahead and throw it out there, my worry is, okay, if you get in a game that's a track meet, can you play that kind of game? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We have not had to do that. Yep. Our run game and our defense has kind of kept us in games, kept them – somewhat low scoring 20s if it gets into a track meet can you do that yeah here's one thing i'll say just let's just review some of the bengals games this year opening the season 23 20 overtime loss right so they didn't light up the scoreboard there arch 17 20 loss at the cowboys three-point game again and then 19 17 loss at the ravens okay so three of those games all decided on a field goal or less and they did not light up the scoreboard in those. However, some of the games that they did win, 27, 27, and 30. So they do have the potential there. Atlanta saw a team in Tampa that has three really good receivers. So it's not like this is the first time the defense is going to see it, DJ. But... You figure if they're going to win, they got to stick to their same game plan. They've got to have success running the football, and and Marcus has got to go out there and play a clean game. Doesn't have to necessarily be thirteen to fourteen, mm-hmm. but he needs to not turn it over. And if he has to throw it away because it's tight coverage on certain occasions, throw it away. Live for another down. Live for a punt. I think both of you guys bring up some awesome and great points to this ball game because when I went back and looked at looking at those numbers and the three losses by a combined eight points, yep. that tells you, guess what? You're going to be in a, a dog fight. You're yep. going to be in a ball game. These guys are not going to go away. It's going to be one of those type of ball games. And then you think about some of the, 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 the guys in this ball game, and you, you mentioned those receivers. You think about how Joe Burrow wants to throw the football around. I looked up some numbers. He's targeted T. Higgins and Jamar Chase 101 times <laughs> in six games. Yeah. So we're talking about those guys on the back end. We have to be ready. Well, guess what? You know they're going to throw it. You know they're going to target those guys. I mean, Tyler Boyd's got 300 yards himself. So it's going to be interesting to see how we go about attacking Joe Burrow. Because guess what? You mentioned you've been sacked a lot, 21 times this year, fourth in the league. Yeah. So this offensive line is susceptible to it. And we just talked about we want more sacks. We want to better get out of the quarterback. This may be a game where you can do it because they've done it in, you know, all their ball games. So it's going to be one of those type of games where – how do you go about tacking this Cincinnati offense and defense? But you have to make sure you do similar things that you've been doing. And I think running football has been key for us. You talk about getting into a track meet. Well, the number one thing to keep a team like that off the field is you run the rock. You keep the ball. You possess the football. I think we've done a good job of, of time possession the last few ball games, making sure that we you know keep the ball away from whoever we're playing. But that's just the MO of this team. Uh-huh. I think this is a team that's – that's designed to be able to get in your face, mall guys, get downhill, and then after the game, go have a few beers with the fans. So 
you know, you rush for 100 yards, <laughs> you win the ball game. Uh, you know, you, you, you have some fun they'll let them in the suite in Cincinnati? Did they go in the suite in Cincinnati and have a beer with those guys? Uh, no, it's it's such a such a, a great I, a great thought uh, about what, the way they've run the ball. And, guys, you thought about, okay, Tampa, really pretty good against the run. Mm-hmm. Okay, and, and two of the better linebackers in the league and Levante David – and, and Devin White. Yep, see two more then, next then, week. Then you went the next week and you went, okay, pretty good D-line, leads the league against the run. A um, couple of pretty good linebackers, Greenlaw and Warner, pretty good players. Mm-hmm. And you found a way to get those guys blocked. And they were playing a ton of eight-man box. They play single high safety shock. You saw it. Yeah. Whenever they went too high, they had no, they did, they had no answer. Yeah. So they rocked the safety down and they still didn't necessarily have the answer. The one thing I would like to say about the O-line, let's give the O-line props. You yes. talked about that. Yep. What I like about the two young backs is it's almost the, they run the ball almost to pay homage to the offensive line because they run violent. Mm-hmm. They run like the O-line blocks. And I don't know that I've seen that in a long time right. where you got guys that kind of mirror their offensive line. Hey, we're coming off. We're fighting. We're, we got doubled. And then all of a sudden, here comes the back, and he's running the same way they're yeah. blocking. And yeah. how, how crazy is it that there were times in this game where there was not – maybe there wasn't anything there. There could have been a negative yardage run, and these dudes find a way to get two, three, four yards Absolutely. or fall four. That happened a bunch of times in that game. You guys know this uh, from our, our old-time days when Alex Gibbs was there, right? Oh, Alex Gibbs you <laughs> always used to say, find me one, two, or three yards. Yeah. Like, I will never forget yeah. him – fussing Warwick Dunn up and down. <laughs> you better stop dancing if you don't get north and south and pick up two or three yards, right? And I think sometimes, DJ, to your point, that's a lost art. Oh, yeah. Like, a lot of running backs want to try to do yeah. something fancy. They want to do something spectacular, heroic, and make somebody miss. The linebackers and DBs in the NFL are too good, mm-hmm. right? Nine times out of ten, they're going to make you pay. But if you can grind it up in there for two or three yards, Big. keep on schedule with the chains, stay out of second 12, second and 14, you've got some chances. I saw Warner step in the hole this week. Outside, his, he's, he's as good a linebacker as there is in the league, right? Uh, you, probably He's a Pro Bowl, multi-Pro Bowl linebacker. Steps in the hole, and Tyler Algier, they're one-on-one. Mm-hmm. And he drops the. He tries to drop the hammer. Algier runs right, right through, through him. him. Yeah. And Warner laid on the field for a while. <laughs> he just laid like, what the hell? Is this? <laughs> that was BYU on BYU crime, by the way. But I mean, uh, unbelievable the way the two backs run with that ferocity. Uh, and again, it mirrors the it mirrors their yeah. uh, guys up front. You know, we talked we talked previously about AJ Terrell coming out of the game. Arthur Smith said that he didn't expect anything major. I didn't know if there's been any developments, but he was saying that they need him back on the field for Cincinnati. No doubt. And hopefully that ends up being he's got a, has a good week because he's going to have his hands full because they're going to take some shots down the field and we got one that's really good in AJ Terrell. Real quick, let's talk about the division, of course. Um, Falcons three and three. Guess what? Tampa Bay is three and three as well, mm-hmm. right? New Orleans with that loss to Cincinnati last weekend, they're two and four, and of course the Panthers, they're uh, they're in a rough spot right now at <laughs> one and five. They're kind of reeling, going the wrong direction, yeah. fired a coach and everything. So again, it's like if you're a Falcons fan, if you're following this team, like we're talking through six games, they're tied at the top of the division right now. It's not a bad place to be. A lot of football left to go. A lot of football left, but at this point, there was. If you talked about some of the national pundits out there, the outlook was not good for this season for the Atlanta Falcons. And so far, they're taking care of their business. And you're talking about being in a spot right now where you're at the top of the NFC South and you're playing the way you're playing and you're starting to get the ire of a lot of people around the league like, oh, this Falcons team is a little bit different than everybody They're kind of fun to watch, you know. They're in every ball game (laughs) and they play a style that's different than a lot of teams. And teams that you thought coming in, oh, San Francisco is known to be physical. They always bring it to everybody. They got the number one ranked defense. And you go out and rush the ball 40 times mm-hmm. on them. That's a statement. So I think this team is in a very good spot. I remember we all talked about it before the year started. This team was going to be a lot better than everybody on the outside said. Now, true enough, we had a chance to be out here a lot and watch this team. But this team believes in each other. And listening to you know the guys talk to Arch after the game, there is there is something inside that locker room that they believe in so much, and you can see it 
it definitely transfers over when they play in the ball game. And, you know, uh, I'm still waiting on Arch to put on the shades like Darren Hall had on. <laughs> CP had him on, you know, a couple weeks back. Darren oh, yeah, Hall he comes did have him on, didn't he? Yeah. Didn't he? There let's, we go, let's talk man. About, let's talk about it. Oh, there it. we go. Well, let's yeah. talk about <laughs> what The thing that I thought stuck out about this week was there was so much conversation about Grady Jarrett uh-huh. and, and the play that was taken away or yep. whatever, whether it was or wasn't. This team didn't miss a beat. Yeah. They just stayed with the task at hand. Let's move on. Yeah. Let's move on. What did they do? They moved on. Yeah. They moved on and dominated the football game in three phases, as you talked That's about. It. Tall order this week, but hey, we're in first place right Shining, now. Shining, baby. <laughs> Shining, baby. Yes, yeah. sir. We, hey, we yeah. talked about physicality running the football, too. I think it, the fact that it's still happening, and Cordero Patterson is the same way, guys. Like yeah. He's a former wide receiver, but he's bulked up, and he will run through some people. So yeah. hopefully they get him back in two or three weeks, and he can add to another phase of this game, as obviously he was a big part of this offense. So that's going to do it. We had a lot of fun. Uh, these 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 episodes tend to be a little bit more no fun doubt. when you got a lot of good stuff yeah. on the field to talk about. So, hey. Hey, boys in the building over there, that direction. Keep it going. That's right. Yeah. Let's keep it going. That's going to do it here for the Falcons Audible presented by AT&T. Thanks so much for joining us. However you get your podcast material, iTunes, AtlantaFalcons.com, YouTube, you name it. Continue to like, subscribe, review. And if you got a great question or a great comment for it, bring I'll it. Our, Sam, our producer, Sam, will find a way to get it to us, and we'll talk about it on the show. That's Maybe. Right. It's right. got to be really good. Though. Sam, what's your phone number so we can tell everybody what? <laughs> 404. <laughs> Never mind. I, I won't do it. Hey, Thanks so much for joining hey, us, everybody. Hope we'll you back Man, next Man week. Just punt it again. <laughs>